Yo, what is going on YouTube? What's going on everybody, man? Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing out there today, man? Welcome back. So today we're diving into some Lou Reed. Perfect day, all right? I was looking for something else to react to, man. Ran into a little bit about Lou Reed and how this song, I guess, initially didn't have much traction, but recently blew up. I can't remember why. Maybe it was featured in a TV show or something, uh, but it blew up. Um, so I don't know. You guys let me know. I'm interested when this song came out, how many people were jamming it, or how many people found out about it just later on, all right? Lou Reed. Perfect day. I'm excited to see what's happening here with this song, man. Let's go ahead and dive in, see what else we got right here with Mr. Louie, uh, Lou Reed. <laughs> Just a perfect day. Drink sangria in the park. And then later, when it gets dark, we go home. Just a perfect day. Feed animals in the zoo. Then later, a movie too, and then home. Oh. The love song and in innocence. Just a perfect day. Problems all left alone. Weekenders on our own. It's such fun. Listen to that dance with the piano and the strings. Just a perfect day. You made me forget myself I thought I was someone else Someone good Oh, it's such a perfect day I'm glad I spent it with you Oh, such a perfect day You just keep me Right, dude i could see that totally being played in a movie or a tv show um so some of the lyrics had me thinking did i have this all wrong i don't know we're gonna try to dive into it where he talked about he pretty much she made him like kind of forget about who he was uh he kind of felt like he was a good person or something like that something along those lines made me think like does she turn you into a bad person does she bring out the worst in you or are you simply saying she for she makes you forget like who you were and in the moment that you're in her company you actually feel like a good person one of those two is taking place here but then the ending part being you're going to reap what you sow seems interesting if we're talking about a perfect day with a a 
a soulmate, right, with a person who you love, those words tend to kind of fall out of place a little bit in the framework of my own mind. So I could be missing something here. So hopefully there is a good description of events happening that we can dive into. But the music, the composition, I mean, guys, you can't go wrong, man. That piano was fantastic. Like I said, the dancing of the strings, you even have the bass backing the whole uh, rhythm on this, man. Dope. And of course, Lou Reed has such a special voice. He's kind of like Eric Burden uh, to me. Their voices are just really great for the type of music they do. Even Donovan, right? They all have those kind of really unique sounds in their tone that fit the music that they produce, man. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so diving into Perfect Day off the album Transformer right here, released in 1972, written by uh, Lou Reed, but producers are David Bowie and Mick Ronson. How, how cool is that, man? Perfect Day is a song written by the American musician Lou Reed in 1972. It was originally featured on the Transformer, Reed's second post-Velvet underground solo album, and as the B-side of his major hit, Walk on the Wild Side. Its fame was given a boost in the 1990s when it was featured in the 1996 film Train Spotting, and after a star-studded version was released as a BBC charity single in 1997. Haven't ever seen Train Spotting. I swear I've heard of this film. Train spotting. The name sounds familiar, um, but I don't know the I don't know the film. Reaching number one in the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Norway, Reed recorded the song in uh, for his 2003 album, The Raven. So I couldn't say which version we were listening to right here. I guess I'll have to wait and see what you guys say about that. The original recording, as with the rest of the Transformer album, was produced by David Bowie and Mick Ronson who also wrote the string arrangements and played piano on the track. That does not surprise me. That's why it sounded so dang good, man. So dang good. The song has a somber vocal delivery and a slow piano bass instrumental backing. The song was written after Reed and his then fiance, later his first wife, Betty Kronstadt, spent a day in Central Park. The lyric is often considered to suggest simple, conventional, romantic devotion possibly alluding to Reed's relationship with Kronstad and Reed's own conflicts with his sexuality, drug use, and ego. So that makes a little bit more sense for some of the lyrics uh, that I was questioning, right? So yeah, maybe he does feel good in her company and she makes him feel like, hey, I'm, I'm a good person when I'm with you. Uh, but maybe the reaping what you sow lines are about everything that he does outside of these moments when he's with her, these, these moments of clarity, these moments of, of just releasing you know, his demons, if you will, uh, falling back into his habits saying, hey, I'm going to reap what I, I what I sow. Like everything that I do will come back to me. Um, but the rest of the song kind of just honoring uh, her being in his life and helping him escape the worst of himself. Right. Uh, some commenters have further seen the lyrical subtext as displaying reads romanticized attitude towards a period of his own addiction to heroin. This popular understanding of the song as an O2 addiction led to its inclusion uh, in the soundtrack for Train Spotting, a film about the lives of heroin addicts. I could see that uh, take on it too. I personally like the first version, uh, and it makes more sense to me considering that he wrote it when he was in the park uh, with his fiance. That I would think there is a hint of actual love there. She's clearly with him, she's clearly on his mind. Uh, in the moment that he's writing the song. So I like to believe in my own head that it is not purely a song about heroin addiction and um, being an addict. Okay, I like to see the two worlds kind of merging and the contrast, the conflict happening within his own heart and mind saying, I love you and I love who I am when I'm with you. But at the same time, I've got this monster inside me and on my back. And those two worlds are just colliding in this song. That's the way it feels. Um, However, this interpretation, according to Reed himself, is laughable. In an interview um, in 2000, Reed stated, No, you're talking to the writer, the person who wrote it. No, that's not true. I don't object to that particularly. Whatever you think is perfect, but this guy's ver uh, vision of a perfect day was the girl, Sangria, in the park. And then you go home. A perfect day, real simple. I meant just what I said. Thank you, Reed. I think that's, how, I think that's excellent. Uh, so this, I mean, you could kind of even nix, he's saying even the negative of it okay it's simply just about a beautiful day and enjoying the company of his woman the woman of his life so 
that's what we got Reed saying on this song. Uh, but whatever you choose is right, he's saying. So no arguing with any of you, okay? <laughs> no arguing with any of you. And that's good. It's it's worthless. It's worthless to argue about the meaning of songs. Um, feel what you like. Talk about what you like, but don't argue with somebody about it. You know what I mean? So thank you guys for tuning in here. I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. If you did, please, please consider becoming a member here on my YouTube or Patreon for as little as three bucks, man. So just more Lou Reed for me to check out. I'd really appreciate that, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the descriptions if you're interested in making donation requests. And with that being said, I'm gone. I'll see you on the next one, man. Peace.